What is good to the family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy and video the QQQ with a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to talk about why tomorrow is going to be an absolutely massive day for Tesla stock as we have deliveries numbers coming out, not to mention more important pieces of data, which will cause the share price to move. So I'm going to break down when the data is coming out, how it could affect Tesla, what the share prices are suggesting for all these different stocks, and how things are looking, in my opinion, for the markets. But before I do anything like that, before I get into any more details, Details. Let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very soon in just about five hours from now. Anyways, for Tesla's breakdown, how things are looking, in my honest opinion, Tesla's on a bit of a downtrend right here, continuing to make lower highs and lower lows, and it's not looking that great from a technical standpoint. Now, we're also at this critical support right here, very close to this 170 area, which is where some buyers defended it. This is exactly what I told you guys in my intraday video would happen. We might see buyers defend, us, de defend Tesla at 170. Now, the question is, what's going to happen for tomorrow? Why is tomorrow such a very important day? I'm going to be talking about all this data before I break down these charts for Tesla Spy and the others. So for data, tomorrow is Tuesday, April 2nd, okay? Uh, 30 minutes after the market opens at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Jolt's job openings report coming out. We have the job quits coming out and just an, another uh, you know set of data. And it's going to be very important because the jobless numbers are going to give us a better understanding of how the economy is looking. And the Fed makes their policies based off the labor market, so it's going to be pivotal for their data sets. So moving forward, I just want to mention that First, we have the jobs numbers coming out at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then from 10 at 10 up until 1.30 p.m., we have a bunch of Fed speakers. We have Bowman giving a speech. We have Williams, Mester, Daly all giving these speeches. So lots and lots of these Fed speakers. But the thing about the Fed speakers that's significant is the fact that on Wednesday, Wednesday, April 3rd, we also have Jerome Powell giving a speech. So that's why we have a bunch of these Fed speakers giving their opinions, giving their insights for now in a, in, in like preparation for when Jerome Powell starts speaking on Wednesday. So that's going to affect the market for now. Look for this jobs uh, data coming out at 10 o'clock a.m., 30 minutes after market open, then a bunch of Fed speakers. I also want to note that right here, th this is going to be like our earnings uh, preview for now. If you're interested in playing any of these, you can take a screenshot. For now, that's what you should be looking for. Uh, I also want to note that for SPY, I just want to call out that SPY doesn't really have much going on this week on the options chain. Uh, the options chain is not as crazy, and we're not seeing as many high put-to-call ratios. So things are shifting a bit in the markets as we're starting the new quarter. And then the last couple of things I'll say about the market are that when you look at the current uh, trend right now in sentiment, we're still quite greedy. Most things are very, very greedy, except we're seeing the puts and call positions dropping a bit as we're seeing uh, puts being closed a bit more. And we're going to be watching to see if this holds. If there's some kind of big event that happens, this could start to uptrend again. If that's the case, this would be a little bit more bearish for the markets. And then another thing that's very important. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say before I start talking about te uh, Tesla. Uh, market volatility is currently at about, uh, that's the VIX, is at 13.65. The 50 EMA is currently at about 13.77. Sorry, the daily 50 moving average, not the 50 EMA. Uh, very similar, but if anything, we're very close to this key moving average. And if we do break through this, this would be like a more bearish signal. We're not really there yet, so we'll see how the VIX responds. We'll just wait for that. Anyways, now let's talk about Tesla. It's all Tesla's turn. We're going to be talking mainly about Tesla for this point on. I just want to mention that um, right now, Tesla is expected to release its Q1 2024 production and deliveries numbers on Tuesday, April 2nd, between 8.30 a.m. and 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, they consistently do release it on the second day of the month, and that's uh, the second day of the month after their quarter ends, of course. And that's going to be for April 2nd. So, yes, Tesla should be releasing their numbers. However, I just want to warn you guys, like I said before, we can't make any promises about the timing. Sometimes Tesla is a little bit late, so it may be a little bit late. Who knows? Uh, maybe it's going to be on time, uh, but it should be on Tuesday, April 2nd, tomorrow. That is what we're all expecting. Now, what are we expecting in terms of deliveries? Here are some very, very nice numbers. Now, uh, Troy Tesla has a very, very, <laughs> excuse me, a, very, a more bearish estimates of about 409,000 deliveries. That's a lot lower than what the consensus uh, are ba is basically for these different analysts. So for Q1 2024, 
uh, the consensus is around 431,000, but Troy Teslek is saying it should be around 409,000. So we'll see who's closer. We'll see who's uh, basically closer to this estimate. On average, major analysts have about 443,000 marked. And we'll see how this goes for production. He's estimating about 429,000. So we'll see what it looks like. Uh, I just want to note that you shouldn't forget about the fact that the Giga Berlin was closed for quite some time. So that could negatively affect their numbers. And then on top of all of that, you can't forget about slowing demand and other factors. Tesla has resorted to advertising a lot more than before. They're actually advertising on the platforms like Meta, on Google, on YouTube, and the list goes on because right now there are big changes going on in the economy and they're trying to get that demand right back up. So that's a big change by Tesla. There was some news that came out that Tesla increases, uh, increased the Model Y prices as of April 1st because the little discount they had that was temporary just expired. So Model Ys did go up a little bit in the USA by $1,000. How long is this going to last? Who knows? Tesla may have to cut prices again if uh, their overall demand isn't the best. Uh, but so far it hasn't happened. This is going to go up for now and we'll see if this changes in the future. So that's it for the Model Y news. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, as far as Wall Street goes, they're not really expecting the best for Tesla. Tesla's down about 29% in the first quarter, at least so far. So that's not the best of news. And because these expectations are not the best, that's why Tesla kind of sold off the way it did. So I just want to note that uh, we should be very patient. Some analysts are saying 420,000. Others are saying like 457,000. This morning, there was an, uh, uh, an analyst known as, I think, Rossner that ended up cutting his target on Tesla as well. Uh, he's basically saying that we might see something close to like 417,000 to 414,000. So we're seeing a lot of these cuts, lots of changes like that, which caused Tesla to drop a bit. And we'll see what happens from here. But at this point, guys, I'm not going to really try to predict anything. I'm not going to try to like give you guys uh, any predictions predictions about what I think the numbers will be like. I just want to say that I'd rather just wait for the data at this point because all the data, all the projections are just all over the place. Some people are saying for 50,000, others are saying for 109,000, other analysts are saying for 20,000. It's all over the place. It's madness. Let's just wait and see. It's less than 24 hours away. It's going to come very, very quickly. And then finally, when it comes to volume, volume is only at 81 million. So we're getting very, very slim volume. Tesla is traded within its range. So this was very similar to what we pre predicted yesterday. And with that happening, I just want to call out that with Tesla kind of dropping and then popping back up, volume is going to go back up tomorrow. And we're going to be looking for some high volatility, most likely. Short volume is only at about, uh, relative to price, about 47%, so not the strongest. And then Deutsche Bank gave Tesla a buy rating. Uh, our price price ratio is kind of flat right now. This will drop really hard if Tesla underperforms tomorrow. And if we get a big bounce in Tesla, this could bounce. So we'll see if that changes. And then don't forget that Tuesdays, historically, they're green about 51% of the time, but I don't think it really matters much. What matters more is that data. So at this point, it's all dependent on the data. That's why it's going to be a very important day. How will Tesla move depending on the data that comes out? Let me talk about some numbers. So uh, I have them, give me one second, right here. So analysts are saying around 430,000 is what we should see. I would say that if we get anything below 420,000, that's going to be very bearish for Tesla in terms of deliveries. And Tesla could easily fall into the 165 area, if not below that, down to like 162. And if we lose that, I, mean, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of us going all the way down to the 150s if we get a very horrendous report close to what uh, Troy has been saying. But if we get it aligned with expectations at like 430, 435,000, Tesla could drop a little bit and just continue to remain in this range between 168 and about 178. And if we get bullish numbers, if Tesla gets over 450,000 or something higher than that, I could see this thing running back up to at least 180 a share. If they you know, crush that, it's going to go even higher. So I would rather just be patient and wait and see how it goes. A very, very big move is going to be coming. I give you guys a warning about implied volatility kind of going up a bit for Tesla, which is because of the fact that we're expecting this big news and we're seeing a big shift in the option premium pricing right now. So be careful. Look for an IV crush. That means uh, with implied volatility dropping, options are going to lose a lot of their value. But for you to make a profit, if you are going long on like other calls or puts or something like that, you would have to be hoping for a very, very big move from Tesla, essentially. So we, we want some high volatility for most people to either make money or lose money. And we'll have to see how it goes. At this point, it all depends on the numbers. I do want to note that a lot of 
great analysts are kind of projecting low numbers for Tesla. So I do see a risk of it dropping more. The chart also looks a bit more bearish. So there is a risk of it coming all the way down to like 166. But just to be safe, I want to wait and see what the numbers look like. I don't want to like, you know, promise anything. And we'll see how it goes for tomorrow. So get ready for some very, very big data. Hopefully the data comes out before the market opens so I could talk about all of it. And we'll just have to be patient from here. Additionally, I just want to call out uh, SPY. SPY is looking a little bit weaker. Now, it's not officially super bearish yet. So we can't really make that a claim. We've lost this trend line, at least for now, but we'll see if we try to reclaim it or not. So see this big white trend line? If SPY manages to break above that, if we break above this trend line, above 523, we could turn back to bullish. If we fail to break above the trend line again, uh, this thing is going to continue to fall. And there's a risk of us coming all the way down to 519. My gut does tell me it's going to try to pop again and eventually make its way down lower. But I do see a risk of us coming down to this imbalance at 520, if not lower levels like 519. So I do see a risk of us revisiting this area before we make an attempt to balance or not. So look for a little pop and drop like move back into this liquidity zone and see if we balance back up. Be a little bit careful with this because this is going to be very dictated by other factors. Now, what else is affecting the market is going to be NVIDIA. NVIDIA is very, very indecisive right now. Been going back and forth and back and forth for four straight days. It tried to break out today, then just got, you know, brought back to its low level. So we're still stuck within this range. 908 is resistance. 892 is support. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So what do I think it's going to do? Well, I do see a little bit of weakness in the chart because... Uh, it, it tried to break out today and it ended up just getting sold off. So it really failed to get that break. It also established a lower high. So I'm seeing some weakness in the risk of 892 and potentially even lower levels. This could start to sink a bit more, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'm seeing a little bit of weakness on this chart. So if NVIDIA starts sinking a bit, this could be a little negative for the QQQ. Uh, I think that this could be somewhat dependent on Tesla, but maybe not to a large extent. Uh, but I just want to mention that whatever Tesla does may affect the QQQ to some extent. Uh, it may not be that crazy, though, compared to like how NVIDIA has moved uh, based off the weights and based off like, the market caps and factors like that. But I just want to note that there could be an effect on it. Look for resistance around 446. That's going to be our very, very key resistance in this range. Supports at 443. If we lose that, watch for 442 and 440. My gut tells me it may pop a little bit and make its way back down or just drop from here all the way down to those lower levels. That's going to be pivotal for our current area. And then for Apple... Apple has a very, very nice looking structure. It's actually downtrending a bit. So with that being said, I mean, from the way I see it, I can actually draw a trend line right here. Let me show you what I'm trying to do. And then we could see a, another retest of this trend line before it tries to continue lower. So look for a little attempt on Apple to make its way back up to about 170.5 or so. We'll see if we break this trend line or not, but this is going to be our key resistance. We might just reject anyways. So look and see if it kind of comes back here and then just makes its way down lower. But I see it eventually coming down to about 169. Just be careful as the chart's looking a bit more bearish. Now, with that being said, guys, I went over like the main five I typically go over. Now I'm going to be kind of quicker and go over more of these tickers out there just to give you guys more insights. Now, NEO is a stock that had to lower its guidance for deliveries. And in doing so, they ended up actually beating their expectation of about 30,000 by a little bit. So that's why the share price is a double bottom like structure. It's trying to rebound right here with a nice wedge so if we break this 50 ema look for a bigger push higher also has this gap right here so i do see some potential for this to push if we break past 4.67 if we break that look for a push for 4.8 then 5 so i see some potential in this charts uh i'm gonna switch over to a bigger time frame to get, just to give you guys better insights uh and from what i'm seeing it's looking a little bit better looking at let me see palantir palantir is looking a little bit weak on the four hour time frame uh but i just want to call out that we have this support right here around this 22.8 area. If we bounce, look for 24. If we're bearish, we want to see it lose 21.8 and start sinking. As of right now, Palantir is showing a little bit of weakness, so there is a risk of it coming down lower. Supermicro is showing some strength on the four-hour time frame. If we manage to continue to push, we could actually try to get back to this wick area around 1,050 if we try to continue to break. If we come back down, watch 1,020, we're going to turn a lot more bearish if we test that and lose that, and then we're going to be dropping. But the chart does look more bullish to me. It might try to push a bit higher. I told you to watch the range we were in. If 1,020 broke, look for a push, and that's what's happening so far. So we called this potential push if we broke resistance, and that's what, that, well, that's what ended up happening. So I see more potential for upside looking at the current trend. For Rivian, we're on a bit of an upside trend as well. 
Uh, I just want to note that uh, despite the fact that it's been making like this high here, uh, you know, a higher low, I wouldn't solely trade based off technicals because Rivian is also going to be heavily impacted by its numbers and Tesla's numbers too. So we'll see how Tesla affects this. If we're really bullish after Tesla comes out, we'll look for a move past 11.5. If we're bearish, we could be revisiting around 10.6 uh, or so. So this zone right over here. Uh, I would say just be patient, give it the time it needs, and we'll see how Tesla affects this. For SoFi, it's just kind of on a bit of a downtrend, uh, but it, it's it's kind of like range bound it very, very tightly, right? This is between, I know it looks like this is a big move, but this is only actually between 7.1 and about 7.5, and it's been stuck within that range for like a couple of weeks. So we could be looking for a test of 7.3 to 7.37, then a rejection back down. I find that that's to be very, very probable. AMD is looking pretty good to me. I called out this resistance yesterday, 183.5. We are pushing. This is exactly what I predicted yesterday, but we have to break this resistance to get a follow through move. So this chart looks a bit more bullish to me. I think if we break this 183.5 area, we're going to be looking for a bigger push. I think that's going to likely happen. So AMD is looking like it has potential. ARM as well. We're going to be looking for a test of about 128.5, then 130. I think it may test those levels, but... If we break them, a bigger move is going to be coming towards uh, 134. But I just want to say that there's a lot of potential right now. AMD could try to push a little higher. For Coinbase, unfortunately, it's not looking too good. We have a head and shoulders like structure. We also lost the 50 EMA. So now our last support is 250. If it loses this, I could easily see this falling all the way down to the two, uh, 240s, very low 240s. So Coinbase looks a bit more bearish. Amazon on a nice uptrend, but be careful because of the fact that we kind of got this big wick right here and kind of rejected a bit. So watch support for a test of 179.8. I think we might test that. If we lose this, a bigger drop is coming to 178 and below all the way down. If we hold this, we could try to bounce. My gut is telling me that with this wick forming, we might actually make our way right back down. For Meta, Meta is looking kind of bullish now. We got a break. So I called out how we had this like falling wedge like structure. Uh, it doesn't look like it as much because I'm using like a, a bigger time frame on the one hour time frame. It looks a little bit better. I'm just going to stick to this one because I, I want to show you something. Basically, we're curling right here. We're about to get a breakout. So this is looking a bit more bullish. Going to be looking for a test of 494. If we break this, I could see it getting closer to 500. So Meta is looking pretty good right here, in my opinion. And then for uh, Microsoft, I'm seeing some potential for it to push higher. I want to see it actually hold above 425. If it comes down, watch 422 is critical support. If we lose that, we have a gap to fill all the way down to 420. As of right now, the charts are building momentum, forming kind of like an inverse head and shoulders like structure. It could come down and then try to bounce. It's looking a bit more bullish, but I want to see a follow through move just to be safe. And then Google looking bullish right now. It could be pushing for 157.5 or higher than that. Looking for some nice momentum. It's looking pretty good to me. For the VIX, the VIX has this big gap down to fill. Does this thing try to break out and continue to push from here, not really fill the gap? Excuse me. Or does this thing get a big rejection and start sinking back down if the market tries to bounce soon? Maybe Jerome Powell, maybe the market could be like bearish for another day or so. And then Jerome Powell causes a big move and the VIX, you know, gets a reaction. That's one theory I have, but who knows, guys? We're not going to just solely trade based off that. But it's another possibility. So I'm just going to say this. I'll be watching the VIX. We'll see if this thing does come back down to fill this gap because the market could launch uh, this down and the market could start pushing again. Or it's going to be the exact opposite. If we hold our 50 EMA 13.5, we could try to bounce and push higher. So we'll just wait and see. We'll, we'll be very patient from here and see how it goes. For the dollar index, we're on a bit of an upside, uh, you know, upward momentum phase right now. It's looking pretty good. Watch 105 is resistance. This is where we got rejected from last time. If the dollar rejects here and starts coming down, the market could actually try to rebound a little bit. If it breaks above 105, this can be not the best of signs. So watch resistance on the dollar. It's looking pretty interesting. All right, guys. So tomorrow is going to be crazy. Let's see a very, very big move on Tesla. We'll see if this thing explodes or if this thing ends up tanking very hard. Uh, I do want to note, I see a gap down here around 160. Uh, four so just be careful and i'm not gonna like promise anything i'm not gonna say tesla will run hard i'm not gonna say it's gonna crash i'm not gonna tell you what i think is gonna happen with deliveries I, I honestly don't truly know so i think it's best for me to just be patient just wait less than 24 hours right and all the data will come out and then we'll see what happens from there because all these analysts are saying different things some are saying 409,000, others are saying 430,000, others are saying 417,000. you know it's all over the place it's just madness to me i'm, I'm just gonna step aside 
give it the time it needs and we'll see what happens. I think that's the best thing to do at this point. And we'll see how Tesla does. So let's hope for the best. I am 100% prepared for the fact that Tesla may tank very hard because the numbers may not look as good. And that's what I'm seeing from lots of different sources. So the best thing to do is just be patient, do what you have to do, guys. And I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow to break down the numbers in real time. Hopefully they're out during the pre-market when I record my videos. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate every single one of you. Tesla to the moon because the long term is very bright. And peace out.